These are the 10 most difficult Kingdom Hearts boss battles in the series. You know those boss fights where you've been saving up all of your elixirs? That point in the game where you need to use all the stuff at your disposal? You know those fights that have nearly brought you to shattering your controller? Those specific battles have constantly put Sora inside of a body bag. We're gonna take a look at those that have been the most soul crushing. Kingdom Hearts is known for its all over the place story and interesting crossover concept, but the boss battles in the series are some of the strongest in gaming. Challenging battles will reward you for learning their patterns and studying their every movement. The ones that are being highlighted are the ones that the community spoke up for when determining the most difficult battles. If you spent the majority of your time on this screen, <laughs> you know the pain that comes with trying to take one of these down. I'll be taking a look at every entry in the series, and ultimately, I know I won't have the same list as everyone else. That's why it's so important for you to tell me in the comments, what are your top three most difficult boss fights for you in the Kingdom Hearts series? I know I'm gonna go through 10, but you know, I don't want you spending too much time down there. You should enjoy the video. <laughs> Today, we will exhibit and analyze what makes these battles so difficult. I hope you're ready for this traumatic run back because these are the 10 most challenging boss battles in the Kingdom Hearts series. When Kingdom Hearts 3 was released back in 2019, it was severely lacking in post-game content. We all knew this would later release in the form of the DLC with Remind, but we had to wait an entire year before that content was released to the public. Much, much later. During this time, many Kingdom Hearts fans went on to battle the Dark Inferno. It was this secret boss located in the Keyblade graveyard after clearing out the main story. Here, the Dark Inferno has had combos you had to download and understand how to properly dodge his attacks. It was a decent challenge, but nothing is compared to the true secret boss of Vanilla Kingdom Hearts 3. And truthfully, most people might have missed this during their initial playthrough. In the Caribbean world, there is a lot of gameplay focused on naval sailing. Sora can build up his own ship and participate in sea battles against enemies. You fire cannons and sail around using crazy Keyblade magic during battles. Although, there is a hidden secret boss located to the south of the Sandbar Isle. Getting to this location in the sea will spawn a black fleet of pirate ships with the health bar so large it matches some of the series' most difficult secret bosses. Outside of doing a ton of damage, the fleet will constantly teleport around. If you don't have your pirate ship maxed out, you're gonna have a really bad time. This thing does a ton of damage if you aren't properly blocking with the water wall. And it's not like you can handle this by using your Keyblade. You need to win this with your pirate ship since there's nothing on board for you to jump and fight. After clearing out all the orbs, the entire main ship will fall, but you have to be near perfection to defeat this thing. I've had several attempts where my boat would just explode. This is easily the most difficult boss for Vanilla Kingdom Hearts 3. Drink up me hearty Joho. Kingdom Hearts 1 is the entry that started it all, and even with it being the first, it was still fairly challenging. To this day, many consider Kingdom Hearts 1 to be the most difficult in the series, and that's nothing short of having to do with the game's secret bosses. After clearing out a good chunk of the main story, a handful of new challenges will appear around the world. If you go back to Neverland and speak to Tinkerbell inside of the ship, she will lead you back to the clock tower. Only this time, a shadowy figure known as the Phantom will be presiding. A big reason for the difficulty of this battle has to do with it challenging the conventions of what Kingdom Hearts has been to this point. For the most part, you can get through the entire game by just hitting the attack button. Throw in a couple heals and every boss in the game will fall through enough perseverance. The thing that makes Phantom so difficult is that you can't apply that logic to this battle. Phantom's whole mechanic is that he can only be attacked with the color below his body. It's constantly changing, making it so that players have to focus more on using magic. Not only that, but the player would need to micromanage the clock, preventing it from running out of time. Because if it does, then you're donezo. You really have to focus on stopping and paying attention, which kind of challenges the fast-paced action of the rest of the game. Learning to adapt is what makes it so difficult, and winning really feels like beating someone at chess. It takes some time, but pay attention and learn to read your opponent. Through Kingdom Hearts Chain of Memory, Sora will have occasional encounters with Riku. The deeper Sora goes into the castle, the stronger Riku will become with every battle. Now, imagine that you just cleared out the Destiny Island section of the game, and you get comfortable right at the save point beforehand. Because the next fight in this game would be the reason that you never ever completed as a child. I kid you not, I got bodied so badly by Repliku 4, I didn't come back for revenge until my adulthood, and it still gave me issues. Roberto got it on the first try. Mind you, I'm not someone who would spam slights in order to get through the battle. Mainly because I didn't know how to use them, so I would just smash my face into the controller like every other Kingdom Hearts player. But Riku Replica 4 just has the last few iterations with so much more speed and damage. You'd likely have to go back and grind for better cards. But I do remember struggling a lot with this one. Now, I see YouTube videos of people just spamming Sonic Blade to completely destroy this boss. Maybe I'm just bad. Nah. Three, two... One of the most iconic video game boss battles in history, the fight with Sephiroth is absolute peak. With Kingdom Hearts 2 being considered much easier than Kingdom Hearts 1, most people thought getting through the game was a breeze. You fool! 
most of the game's challenge was dialed down to make it more appealing. And then you make your way into the dark depths of Hollow Bastion and find Sephiroth. This is his second appearance in the game and instantly cemented himself in history. I bet you the first time you fought him, you were not anticipating that reaction command right at the beginning. You got all cut up and that's okay, they just got the jump on us. Then with the run back, you successfully blocked in and needed to learn the rest of his kit. From his incredible speed, range, ability to teleport, Sora always needs to stay on his toes. After a few health bars, he adds in these dark spears to throw off your movement, but at no point does he let up. There's also that moment where he will take up all of your HP within a single hit, leaving you with no magic to heal yourself so you had to resort to using items. And those who battled Sephiroth in Vanilla Kingdom Hearts 2 didn't have limit form to rely on. It's so helpful in Final Mix, but it does make the battle a lot easier. Still, Sephiroth and Kingdom Hearts 2 really push players to their limits. And after winning this fight, you get one of the coolest action sequences in the series. Seeing Cloud and Sephiroth duke it out to a literal other world was insane. It's a shame we never got this conclusion in Kingdom Hearts 3. In Kingdom Hearts 0.2, players take control of Aqua during her time in the Realm of Darkness. Here, she faces off against darkness, poor mental health, and her doubts being physically manifested. When exploring the Snow White section, Aqua will be forced to face off against shadow clones of herself. With each encounter, they get a bit more challenging. After completing the game, there will now be hidden zodiac symbols for players to find throughout the worlds. After collecting all 12 of them, a mirror will open up where you can find the final Phantom Aqua. And I consider this to be one of the greatest boss fights in the Kingdom Hearts series. It's incredibly challenging, mixing up the players with magic, unblockables, and an incredibly tough desperation move. You really need to pay attention to her moveset in order to punish her. She also wastes no time being staggered, making it difficult to land a complete combo without being punished. And punishment, punishment, and crime. And because of this, you have to work extra hard to clear it. It's one of the most rewarding battles in the series because of how it takes Aqua to another level. I really didn't know this character had this much combat potential until it was put to the test. They should have copied and pasted this exact fight into Kingdom Hearts 3. I would have loved to battle her with Sora's full moveset. The first encounter with Sephiroth in the series still sends shivers down my spine. The opening cutscene where he just teleports out of the sky and this fiery glory is just drilled into my head. The arena is super scary with thorns growing out of the side and the sky being purple. Do you remember what it was like to attack him for the first time? And you notice that with every hit, his health bar was not decreasing at all. Wait, this isn't right. I call shenanigans! I thought I was doing something wrong until I realized that this man just has that much HP. They didn't program another bar, they just extended it without letting you know. And then there's the rest of the fight. I went into this battle after my encounter with his version in Kingdom Hearts 2, and Sora is just so much slower in this game, you really have to play it close and fast. Sephiroth would waste no time pulling up on you with a fast slash, fire, or darkness. The camera is also fairly limiting in this fight, occasionally getting stuck whenever Sephiroth would teleport, which is something you need to account for when using your moves. It took me hours to finally defeat this battle, but man was it such a rush when I finally brought them down. When Kingdom Hearts 3 Remind was released, it featured tons of new and challenging boss battles to participate in. Some players consider these fights some of the greatest designed in the series, and I fully agree with this sentiment. With Kingdom Hearts 3 not really having much to battle outside of Dark Inferno, it was pleasant to get to know an entirely new data organization to battle, with older members having newer movesets and new members being a tree all on their own. Ultimately, any data organization battle could be put in the spot. Everyone has that one that they struggle with the most on their first playthrough, but from my personal experience, the one that got me the most was Data Syax. Slow motion over there. This guy. Oh no! You should not be allowed to do that! Oh no! He could stun you! Oh my god, I have to learn an entirely new different boss's moveset after I just had to deal with the Dark Riku thing. My health, uh, my brain is strained. He's just so incredibly aggressive for most of this battle. The thing for me is that he has the ability to stun Sora with certain hits, and getting caught with this leaves me wide open to basically instantly die. Then there's those waves of flames that are unblockable and I will often be in the area that I dodged into. When Remind came out, I spent a majority of my time streaming my first experience, and Data Syax took me the longest to defeat out of everyone. Master Xehanor and Xion felt like child's play compared to what Data Syax put me through. If you have any data organization nightmare stories, please share them in the comments. This is a safe space and I just like reading that kind of stuff. Kingdom Hearts secret bosses are supposed to be the most difficult. They're designed to make you want to destroy your controller in some sense. Although the game is supposed to fill you with a sense of pride when the battle is finally completed. But what they did with Mysterious Figure, the amount of concocted evil they produced in this brain dead battle. If you played this on the original PSP, I'm sure your handheld has some cosmetic damage right now. From the very beginning, it is just an onslaught of attacks. And since this is Birth by Sleep, the character movements are a lot more limited. Aqua and Ven at least have a little bit of a chance when using their dodging abilities, but poor Terra, he is built like an ox. I've never seen someone struggle so badly. <laughs> Most people have conceded and gone with using the Thunder Surge strat, which is basically building an entire deck of Thunder Surge and spamming it throughout the entire battle. Because trying to actually learn to counter this battle is almost meaningless. It's so incredibly hyper aggressive, it loses a lot of the satisfaction that comes with winning. But still, defeating it is incredibly tough for those who choose not to spam, especially those who choose not to cheese it with Terra. 
Y'all are built entirely differently. After completing Kingdom Hearts 2 Final Mix, players will receive a notification of a gate appearing in Disney Castle. Upon entering the gate, you'll appear in a wasteland where a red and gold body of armor waits for you. This is the Lingering Will, a personified version of hatred and grief, and it is one of the best and most challenging Kingdom Hearts battles out there. I mentioned how Kingdom Hearts 2 is considered one of the easier entries in the series, but the Lingering Will throws that entire notion out of the window. All of his moves have the ability to bring Sora down to a single bit of HP. He has range and speed using his Keyblade Glider to get around, but he also tries to overwhelm the player with lasers and whips. With one of these moves, he has the ability to steal Sora's physical or magical attacks. You basically have to use the other as a mechanic to bring it back. Point is, Lingering Will requires you to be on your A game the entire time, and his final desperation move requires near perfection in order to dodge it. You can't just spam glide or dodge roll to get around. You have to read his moves and understand when the windows will be open. There is a way to cheese this battle using the Fenrir Keyblade, so that does remove a lot of the challenge, but treating this as the epic clash between Keyblade wielders like it is is much more of a rewarding experience. The Kingdom Hearts series has pushed its players further beyond anyone could imagine for a fun Mickey Mouse game. Combat situations that are akin to titles like Dark Souls, Devil May Cry, and other heavy action titles. Although the one battle to really surpass any other and bring out an entirely new level of gameplay has to be Yozora from Kingdom Hearts 3 Remind. I made a community post about which Kingdom Hearts boss is the most difficult and I asked you guys and Yozora won with little to no competition. Upon facing him for the first time, the game anticipates that you would lose this first encounter. So much so they created an entirely CG cutscene where Sora is getting bodied for the first time. They put a million dollars into that high quality cutscene of you getting clapped. But that's only the beginning. Yozora can teleport, has projectiles, contains unblockables, can summon clones, change the entire arena, send those godforsaken mechs at you. If you're foolish enough to enter this battle with a Koopo coin, an item that will revive Sora when his HP has reached zero, then you have made a colossal mistake. <laughs> as Yozora has the ability to steal it and will get half of his HP back after he's dead. It is one of the most mental mind games I've ever seen, but it is an example of a pinnacle boss fight. You start the battle and all of his attacks seem nearly impossible to defeat, but with every attempt you learn something more and start to put it all together. All of a sudden you can properly dodge, time magical attacks, and punish his moves, adding it all together to create a successful run. Defeating Yozora is such a satisfying feeling and set the bar for what a Kingdom Hearts boss battle can be. Considering this is the most recent attempt at it, Kingdom Hearts 4 will have massive shoots to fill. But that's what I think. These are the 10 most difficult boss battles in the Kingdom Hearts series. Of course, let me know which ones I'm missing because you know the comments love telling me how I'm fitting 40 boss battles into a top 10. Y'all are crazy. <laughs> I love it. Never change. These are the ones that put me into the ground, especially that damn boat. I'll never forgive the pirates for this. Bloody pirates! Still, thank you all so much for watching. Please be sure to comment, like, subscribe, and stay awesome.